Hey guys, my name is Manikin, and welcome back to Mastering EDM with FL Studio. I sincerely apologize that my microphone quality is crap today, but uh, I'm just going to have to deal with it. I do not have my regular microphone, so I have to use this built-in microphone, and it really stinks. Sorry about that, but without further ado, let's stop complaining and get into today's video. So here's what we had last time, just as a refresher. I haven't changed anything. Actually, I have, because I tried to record this video before, but... Um, uh, but anyway, uh, it should be the same from where we left off last time. So uh, without further ado, we'll get into today's topic, which is virtual instruments. So uh, you can actually see this menu now. I was running into problems getting this menu to show up while I was recording. Um, but you could add a new channel here uh, by clicking this add button. And uh, that might not have shown up in my previous videos. So I apologize if that's actually the case. Uh, but what, you're, uh, what we're, we're going to do right now is we're just going to go to Citrus right here. And you'll notice that it's got a whole bunch of settings here that we're not going to worry about. So uh, you don't have to worry yourselves about, uh, you know, getting too much into all this crazy stuff in here and uh, what everything is in all of these. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is you could actually hear... When we click notes, it makes sound, but in a different way from a sample. It doesn't just like play back a sound, it actually creates sound. So that's the difference between a virtual instrument and recorded audio. The virtual instrument uses math to create a sound. So that's cool stuff there, uh, but we're not going to go into too many details as to how it does this and uh, and how to actually really use this all that much. What I'm going to show you though is uh, if you go up here and click that, go to presets, you have a whole bunch of presets you can dig through. And there's tons of options and uh, you can just go through and try checking everything. So, um, so I'm going to go right now to Synth 2 because this is one I want for this particular sound. And we're going to start to key in stuff. So you can hear this one sounds like this. Very kind of stereotypical bass sound. So uh, that's what we're going to call it. Right click, rename this bass. And then we're going to add a pattern here. So pattern, insert one. And we're going to name this one ba uh, bass line with two S's instead of three. Uh, okay, so... Uh, now what we could do is we could pop open this again, and then we'll just assign it another mixer track here. Whoops, that was the wrong button. Uh, go away. There we go. We're going to go drop down, and then here we go. Assign free mixer track, and you'll notice it pops us down here. And that's basically all we were doing in the previous video. Uh, so nothing new here. It's all just kind of review, going through you know the way, exact same way that we created tracks and kind of assigned them to mixer tracks here. And, uh, and then you know we just drop in a pattern here, going like this and uh, then we'll play the pattern. Except that's kind of bland. Uh, we're stuck with one note. I'm just turning down the volume right here. Um, we're stuck with one note and it just kind of just plays until the next note. And it's not all that amazing. So uh, how can we start to have fun? I mean, you see in here, there's a whole bunch of different nodes that we could drop it to, so why why is it only sticking to one? Well, the whole thing is, with this, we use the piano roll. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click here and go to the piano roll. And this is basically where the video is. Okay, I'm just kidding. Um, so, so basically, this is the only new thing we're really gonna introduce today. Um, and, you know, we're gonna go through and see here that, you know, uh, each one of these is actually kind of has a corresponding uh, track or not track but uh, corresponding piano roll to it we can click on these and it brings with the piano roll just double clicking and you kind of see uh, some different things going on here but um, but we'll go back to uh, just go to back to patterns select the baseline and then we're gonna go to the piano roll on this one actually we're gonna clear this first and then we'll go to the piano roll. now we can actually start keying in notes so I'm going to go to D4 just because I can and I'm gonna extend this note out a little bit so it's that long there we go. And um, you'll notice that when we started keying in notes, we could uh, not only key them in in the same sort of layout, so you see that one lays out, uh, and they pretty much match up. And then we have another one if we put one, let's say, we want a note here. So it's going to be right between these two. So it's going to be right there. So it all lines up, so nothing new by way of that. The only thing is that's different really is now we have the flexibility to make things go pitched up or down. So I'm going to drop this one down here. So we have four, or actually three, and then it drops down uh, by two notes. So it goes. That's all it's going to do. So we'll just play the back to pattern. So 
So nothing amazing there. And once again, we could just drop this in, paint it the exact same way we paint in all the other loops. So uh, pretty much 90% of everything is the same. The only new thing is we can now work in the piano roll now that we know where that is. Um, so, so yes, we actually can go in and do some interesting things here. So I'm gonna play this back, uh, play back the song. But first I think we need to take the kick and uh, turn off the overdrive. So, you know, um, overall, it's kind of the same thing just with the bass line now. And uh, so that's, you know, that would make sense because that's all we really did. We just created a new channel, or, or, yeah, a new channel here. And then we uh, routed it to the mixer track five. So it's right here and we can change the volume and, and add effects to it as well. Um, but otherwise, nothing really new. It's just kind of mostly review. Um, but we did have the piano roll, which is a big thing, and that's going to be where most of your frustration lies. Because <laughs> this is where, when you have all that flexibility to do timing and notes, um, you're going to have a lot of trouble you know, finding what notes are right. And that's where music theory comes in. If you want to learn more about music theory, I do have a series uh, on music theory, except for it's in logic. Um, although, rest assured, if you watch that, you're not going to be confused much just because uh, the l piano roll in logic looks very, very, very similar to the one in FL Studio. So I am going to show you one quick trick here for just from to make things a little faster. Um, if you want to say you want to key in a whole bunch of notes, you just go start uh, clicking in notes, and you want to make this whole area just really fast notes. Well, instead of just clicking in every single time, remember click is create, right click is erase. We can hold Control and select these. Uh, I believe I showed you how to do that in the playlist as well. So that's how that's one of the ways. And then if you hold shift and drag, you could duplicate them. So then we could actually do this a lot faster than just going. There we go. Oh, dang. It keeps, sometimes it puts the notes in the wrong spot. So, uh, so it is a little bit difficult if you're just gonna click it every single time. So that's my suggestion. Just create enough notes and then control shift Control, shift, and there you go. You have a really fast note, prog note progression. And bingo, that's pretty much it. I mean, you don't need to worry too much about um, uh, all the other stuff that's going on because uh, the, there's a whole bunch of tools up here you could use, but you're not going to use them very much at all, honestly. Um, most of what you're going to be doing is just kind of clicking around here and... Uh, with uh, you're going to be extending the note length sometimes, but uh, for the most part, you're just going to be kind of creating moving around notes, and that's there's a lot you can do with that, and um, and now you know you have the flexibility, and once again, we could go in and actually click the kick here, and we could uh, take the kicks notes and move them up. So we'll put them right here. This would be fine, kind of funny. So when we play back the kick. So that's uh, you could just you could tweak pretty much anything in the piano roll. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is if you have multiple things, you notice we have our our little drum loop here. If I double click this, it only shows the first one. You can see it's, that's highlighted right there. It's only showing the first one. It's not actually showing the notes for all of them. So you would need to right click and go to piano roll for some of these other ones if you wanted to do that. So um, that's almost it for this video. There's one other important thing that I need to introduce. Now that we know how to use all these other ones, you could check out some of them. Um, we have. Uh, we have a whole bunch of options here so by way of synthesizers, but some of them are actually locked and in demo mode. So I'll show you, uh, for instance, if I go to Sakura, um, it's, uh, if I go up here, the presets are not actually up here um, like they were in the other one. They're actually right here. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. Some of these various ones uh, have the presets in different spots. So you just kind of go through and show some of these. Uh, we'll go to Harmless. Uh, this is a demo version as well, and uh, this one has, let's see, it does have the presets up here, 
But if you go down to uh, replace this with uh, SAR, on the other hand, it does not have the presets up here. So you kind of got to look around. If there's no presets up here for you to bounce through and listen to, uh, sometimes they're in little boxes like this, program name, and you could just kind of choose different ones. So, um, so there's some things here. Although there's one crucial thing that you need to know before we go. I'm just going to replace this with uh, uh, this here and this is our little friend fl chan and she is our source of inspiration um if you've ever if you've ever met a producer who uh uses fl studio i'm sure you could ask them and they will tell you that fl chan is the best and she is a source of all inspiration and she is why the music is awesome so we're going to put fl chan there from now on here on out every single video i hope to have her here joining us and dancing to our music so anyway thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video <laughs>